in this episode we're going to test what we know about Matthew 24 and 25 by going through the passages where the kingdom of God is mentioned in the book of Matthew and then we'll try to assess whether our um, conclusion that the kingdom of God is still future is valid also we'll try to figure out when is the end of the age that means uh, we'll try to figure out when is this age or their age going to end and when is the the age to come going to begin and lastly we'll also try to uh, explore this idea of already and not yet when it comes to the kingdom of God so let's begin uh, first mention is in Matthew 3 and uh, dito sa chapter na ito, John the Baptist started preaching and his message, his proclamation is repent for the kingdom of God is near knowing what we know based on Matthew 24 that the kingdom of God will be entered into when uh, Christ comes in power and glory so it's their future and it's near based on their preaching no it could have happened and if this happens in their generation katulad ng sinabi ni Jesus then that day or hour although they don't know when it's going to happen even Jesus said he doesn't know when this is going to happen but he did say this is going to happen immediately after the distress of those days Kaya yung preaching ni John, yung preaching ng kingdom is imminent in their time. No, it's, they have this perception that the kingdom is near sa time nila. Ganun din si Jesus when he, after he was baptized, he started preaching, he preached the same message. That the kingdom of God is near. Referring to this kingdom. And then, yun nga, sa Matthew 4.23, for the duration of his ministry, sabi ni Matthew, Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. So, ang gospel, I originally, they called it the good news of the kingdom. This is the same gospel that uh, we believe now. Oh, this is the same gospel that's has the power of God to salvation of anyone who believes. So we're not saying this is a different gospel. So what we're saying is this is the same gospel. And originally it is called the, the gospel of the kingdom. Because it's near. Yun ang message nila. No? And uh, malalaman natin kung ano pang mga mention ng kingdom of God sa Matthew. And ganun din, when Jesus commissioned his disciples to preach to the 12 tribes for forbidding them to preach to the tribes of the Gentiles or to the to the areas of the Gentiles sabi niya uh, proclaim this message the kingdom of God has come near again it's near it's almost knocking at their door no, sa generation nila and sa sermon on the mount when he uh, started to preach on the foot of the mountain Ang message niya uh, is about the Beatitudes. Ano? Sabi niya, blessed are the poor, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers. At dito sa verse 10, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So sa kanila daw ito. Although it's still future, even though they are going to enter it in the future, reference dito sa message ni Jesus, it will be theirs. No, it's theirs to the poor, to the to those who mourn, to those who are meek, to those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Okay, now, uh, nung nangangaral si Jesus sa kanyang sermon sa Mount, ang sabi niya, if anyone sets aside one of the least of these commands referring to his commands Jesus commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven so when this kingdom comes 
which is near, according to their perspective, those who teach a lesser or those who teach uh, to set aside some of the commands of Jesus will be called least in the kingdom of God. And then, sabi niya, after giving them uh, the commands of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, sabi niya, I tell you that unless you, your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. So, the kingdom is still future. They're looking forward to it. And Jesus is discipling them, teaching them about the kingdom. So, they are actually what uh, today is called the disciples of the kingdom and they are being discipled or taught about the righteousness that will surpass the righteousness of the Pharisees now the, the Pharisees are uh, in the book of Matthew are depicted as um, hypocrites and uh, they are they have double standards and so uh, what Jesus taught the disciples here in uh, this, on the sermon on, in the Sermon on the Mount is that they're going to have to surpass that righteousness to be really and truly righteous before God. And then he also taught them to pray. The prayer nila is, "Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven." So the kingdom of God in their perspective is still future so they're praying for that kingdom of god to happen to come and the will of god to happen on earth now as is uh, so earth we know that that this world that the world that they lived in or the world that we are living now although it's it's uh it's under the providence of god and god is in control of this world it's under rebellion no, kaya ang sabi niya, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When when this rebellion ends, the will of God will fully be uh, enforced, even in this kingdom, in this kingdom of this world. Now, sabi niya, sabi niya pa, seek first his kingdom and righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So, it's this kingdom that we are, they are supposed to seek. Or prioritize. Next, at sabi niya, and not everyone who says to him, "Lord, Lord," will enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, future. No, the kingdom is future. Not all of them will enter that kingdom unless they do. They 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 do the will of the Father who is in heaven, which is obeying the commandments of Christ. And dito na sa chapter 8, uh, this, uh, this happened, ang context nito is uh, Christ was impressed by the faith of the centurion. Uh, the, the, the centurion had great faith according to Jesus. And uh, dito niya nabanggit, no? Now many will come from the east and west, uh, referring to the Gentiles, and will take their place places at the feast with Abraham, because this is foreseen as the banquet with Abraham, this kingdom. But the subjects of the kingdom referring to the Israelites who have no or, lit or have little faith or have no faith in Jesus, these subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside. At ganun din, ano? sa, nung nasa Jerusalem na siya, he was de debating with the, with the religious authorities and he told them, Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you. Because they do not believe him. And they even, uh, they even accuse him of uh, using the power of Satan or Belzebul. Kaya ang sabi niya, uh, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you. Referring to the religious authorities and those who do not believe in him. And be given to a people who will produce its fruits. Or its fruit. At dito ay uh, binanggit niya yung parable of the tenants. So, dito sa parable na ito. Now from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent 
take it by force. So ito yung pinapatungkulan niya rito is yung paniniwala sa kingdom of God and it's being it's suffering violence kasi yung mga zealot no they think that the kingdom of God will come by by uh, using force. No they are doing that before until John the Baptist kasi when John the Baptist came he started to preach repentance instead. No, he started and and he looked like a, a lowly uh, prophet. He's just wearing a a lowly garb. No, yung 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 kinaka pati mga kinakain niya ay uh, uh, locust and all those stuff. Kaya uh, sabi niya rito, Jesus is contrasting the way zealots. Uh, understand the kingdom with John the Baptist. And uh, and dito naman sabi niya sa mga sa mga nan- critics niya ano kasi they they're saying they're claiming na yung power niya is not coming from God but from Satan. Uh, ang sabi niya but if if it is by the spirit of God that I drive out demons then the kingdom of God is upon you. Now, how how can we reconcile this when, when we say, based on what we learned from Matthew twenty four and twenty five, that that the kingdom is still future? How come Jesus is saying here that because he's driving out demons, and uh, through the spirit of God, that the kingdom of God is upon them? Well, the answer is really rather simple. It's actually the kingdom visitation, but in the person of the king. Uh, because the king is right there in the world however the actual kingdom is still future now it will be established the future kingdom will be established only with the king when the kingdoms of this world is broken into pieces like what it says in daniel 2 verse 44 Sabi dun sa daniel it shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and bring them to an end and it shall stand forever. Now, dito sa parable na ito, no, sa parable na ibinigay niya about the parable of the weeds, ang harvest dito ay, um, we believe, no other than the day when Jesus comes. So, kasi sabi dito, let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will send the reapers. Gather the weeds first in the parable of the weeds and bind them into in bundles to be burned so i'm doing eternal punishment but gather the wheat into my barn so ito yung barn so the wheats will be burned at the harvest and the wheat will be gathered in the barn so the harvest is no other than the coming of the lord remember at the coming of the lord he will gather his elect and then at the coming of the lord he will sit on his throne and judge the nations and those and like separating the goats from the sheep and the goats will will uh, go to everlasting punishment and the sheep will go to eternal life so yun yung interpretation ng parable na yun. based on his own interpretation when he was privately with his disciples sabi niya a meaning down ng field where the sower so uh, try to sow the seed is the world and the good seed sabi niya, stands for the people of the kingdom so they are the people of the kingdom living in the world now, the weeds are also the people but people of the of the evil one in the world so the the people of the kingdom and the people of the evil one commingle in this field the world but they are not yet in the kingdom of god no they are in the world so what is already is that the already is they are already the people of the kingdom what is not yet is the coming the kingdom of god they have not yet entered the kingdom of god but the 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 citizens are already uh, living they are living strangers uh, in a strange world just like picture abraham uh, when god gave him a promised land and yet he tried to live in Egypt diba? parang ganun siya, stranger siya sa, sa ibang lugar 
na hindi kanya. Oh, so, here, the concept of already is the people of the kingdom, the citizens are already there. They are already waiting uh, to entrance to the kingdom of God. So, already not yet. Katulad nung example natin last time, uh, meron na silang visa sa passport nila, pero hindi pa sila nakakapasok dun sa city na gustong-gusto nilang puntahan. Now, they are waiting for Uh, ma malift yung quarantine at makatravel na sila at makabalik na sila makapunta na sila sa, sa city nila but they have that visa no, they are already the people of the kingdom but the kingdom is still to come right so yung harvest na tinutukoy doon is the, the day or the hour the second coming and the weeds will be burned which, me, which symbolizes the eternal punishment for the weeds in the kingdom And then the weeds, uh, are, when the weeds are burned, yung wheat naman, they, they will go into the barn. Yun yung nire-represent ng kingdom of God, yung barn. At uh, base dito sa par parable of the weeds na ito, uh, yung, yung righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Yan ang, ito yung paliwanag mismo ni, ni Lord sa mga disciples tungkol sa parable of the weeds now here's another parable the parable of the mustard seed no? uh, the, the kingdom of God or king, the kingdom of heaven they are synonymous is compared or likened to the grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field then it, it grow no? nag grow siya hanggang naging puno siya Now, since the kingdom of God is future, so we can expect that the seed of the kingdom are the people of God. So they are living as pilgrims or strangers in this world, but it eventually it will grow and it will become the, a tree nesting all sorts of birds. Now, when Jesus comes, it will become a tree nesting all sorts of birds. At ibig sabihin, well, ano na siya, hindi na siya seed, wala na siya dito sa, sa age na ito. Another example is the parable of the yeast or the leaven. Uh, sabi sa verse 33, The kingdom of heaven is like a leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of floor till it was all leaven. So this is similar to the parable of the mustard seed. No, yung yung yeast pag hinalo mo sa floor mali, ma, ma, manipis pa siya and time will come uh, when at the time of the second coming it will be fully grown aalsa na siya no, so ito yung people of the kingdom hid in three measures of floor and then it will the floor will all be living in the kingdom of God wala nang, wala nang part ng floor na hindi na walang pampaalsa yung buong floor, yung, 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 yung minasa ay umalsa na. Here's another parable, parable of the dragnet or the fishing net. Sabi dito, once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that's, that was let down in, into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. So yung dinrag yung net na yun, yung inahon yung net na yun, yun yung, yun yung uh, end of this age. Right, the second coming and then the angels at the end of this age when, when, when Jesus comes and with his angels with him gathering the elect from the four winds the angels also base dito sa parable na to will separate the wicked from the righteous kapag si Jesus na is on his throne judging the nations and he will separate the goat the goats from the sheep So this time, ang sabi dito sa parable, ang explanation ni Jesus, the angels will separate the wicked from the righteous. Here's another um, passage from verse 3 of chapter 18. Sabi niya, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. So again, the, the kingdom is consistently future sa book of Matthew. And uh, he, he said it again in Matthew 19, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, 
for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as this so again the context is that that kingdom is future and that the little children will enter the kingdom of god so we will be like little children not trusting obey be obedient and they still arrogant and they still proud no, they, instead they are humble and trusting so those pro properties or qualities of little children uh, pinapatuloy niyo doon yung mga disciples because for those types of people they belong to the kingdom of God they will enter the kingdom of God okay so again uh, let's talk about two more parables they are similar parable of the pearl of great price and parable of the hidden treasure dito sa parable na to ang sabi niya sa verse 52 ng chapter 13 therefore every scribe who has been trained for for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old so para daw dun sa disciple of the kingdom no a scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven so the disciples of the kingdom no it's like a master of his house who brings out uh of his treasure what is new and what is sold just to obtain or to buy this pearl of very very expensive pearl a similar parable is the the parable of the hidden hidden treasure no nakatago yung treasure dun sa isang piece of land and so uh, ibebenta niya yung piece of land uh, para mabili niya yung piece of land bibili niya yung buong land no Ngayon, this is this is in contrast with those who are rich no, na mas mahalaga ang kayamanan nila kesa sa kingdom ni God kaya ang sabi ni Jesus sa Matthew 19.23 truly I tell you it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God again the context of the kingdom of God is future right now sa Matthew 28 after crucifixion after resurrection after 40 days uh, meeting with the disciples before Christ ascended into heaven ang sabi niya all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me go therefore and make disciples of all nations no, make them disciples of all nations disciple them about the gospel of the kingdom no, make them disciples of the kingdom and sabi pa dito, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. Remember, ang utos niya is uh, ituro lahat. Ano? At kung sino man magbabawa sa turo niya will be least in the kingdom. No? Or kung sino man magtuturo na sumuway sa kautosan niya will be least in the kingdom. In the coming kingdom. Kaya ang sabi niya, teach them all things I have commanded you. Command, commanded you. And, uh, and sabi niya, and behold, I am with you always to the end of age. If it's been, they are still in that age. And when is the end of age? So based on the parables that we've learned, the end of age is the day or the hour of Jesus coming into power and glory. When he uh, descends from, from the sky, from the clouds, and everyone sees him, like lightning is seen from east to west, that would be the end of the age. All right. So again, the the perspective of the end of the age being fulfilled in the time of the disciples is still there. Although kahit sinabi na ni Jesus na no one knows exactly the day or the hour when this is coming, and then Jesus gave two parables to prepare the disciples in case his day or his the hour of his coming is delayed. Pero ang pangako ni Jesus, he will be with them till the end of the age based on the context and based on what we've learned about Matthew the end of the age is the day or the hour of his coming right remember sa Matthew 24 nung pinag-uusapan doon is when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age the end of the age is when he comes and then the angels will gather the elect he will sit on his throne and he will judge the nations and separate the goats from the sheep the goats will go to eternal punishment and the sheep will be welcomed into the kingdom of god into eternal life
And then he gave also another parable, uh, parable of the workers in the vineyard. At dito sa verse 28 to 30 ng chapter 19, sabi niya, Truly I say to you, in the new world, so kailan kaya ito? Of course, in the kingdom of God, at the end of the age, when the Son of Man sits on His glorious throne, okay, obviously, dito mangyari yun, when He comes, you who have followed me will also sit on the twelve thrones. So they will have this reward. Judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. Again, eternal life. But, so may pasubali. No? First of all, let's let's talk about this. No, siyempre dito, the, the, the wickedness will increase. They will be persecuted. They will be handed over to the authorities. And they will be put to death, imprisoned. Here, when the abomination of desolation comes, there will be even more great distress. And it will be shortened for the sake of the elect. So they would have left their families, mga nag-apostatize, yung mga nag-turn away from the faith, and their lands uh, to, to flee because they will be persecuted. Sabi dito ni Lord, because you have sought the God's kingdom first, and you, you pursued His righteousness first more than your basic needs, more than the riches of this world, you will have your reward when the Son of Man sits on His glorious throne. But, no, may pasubali siya, but, many who are first will be last, and the last first. Now, after that, he gave a parable, which is the parable of the workers in the vineyard. Uh, to cut the long story short, dito sa parable na ito, may mga hinar na mas maaga ang pasok, yung iba sa kalagitnaan ng araw, kala, kala, kainitan, yung iba, papatapos na yung araw, saka lang sila kinuha para makapagtrabaho. And yet, they receive the same wage. No? A denarius. Same wage. Different number of hours. And obviously, different types of e- efforts. Um, different volume of sweat and tears. But they get the same wage. No? A denarius. Kaya nagreklamo yung mga nauna. Dito sa parable na ito. Uh, sabi nila, this last, this last work only one hour, no, four o'clock lang pumasok, five o'clock na. And you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. Kami umaga pa, kami iba tangali pa, pero kapareho ng sahod nila. But he replied in the parable, the, 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 the employer in the parable, sabi niya, friend, I am doing doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this to the last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So, the last will be first and the first last. So, itong dalawang to, uh, these are inclusio. And this means this is an explanation for the, the the this this saying to balance out what Jesus taught. Yung tinuro ni Jesus dito sa kanila. In other words, you may have sacrifices al sacrifice a lot and sacrifice more, but some people who will sacrifice less or work less for short even for shorter time, they too will. I will be merciful to them and I will give them the same reward as you so don't be uh, don't be don't be angry or don't begrudge my generosity yes you will have your reward but many who will come after you will also get the same reward they will also sit and judge the 12 tribes of Israel otherwise how can it will be how can it be the same reward if they also don't sit on the 12 tribes of, to judge the 12 tribes of Israel and have eternal life diba? next what about this um, 
what Jesus said to Peter and then later on sa church no uh, ability to bind and loose no, sabi niya kay Peter I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven so how can we say the kingdom is still future and he already has the keys okay so later on sa Matthew 18 papaliwanag yung binding and loosing which is act Actually, about dealing with sinning brothers. No? When someone sins against you, against you, uh, talk to him and then try to win him over. Kapag hindi, bring another witness uh, to like uh, arbitrate. If not, bring him to the church. If he doesn't repent or recognize recognize you, treat him as you would a pagan or unbeliever. So this is actually about church discipline, no? judging within the church if you recall sa Corinthians well, letter ni Paul pinagsabihan niya yung mga, mga believers doon kasi they are suing one another as if there is no capable judge within the church no what about this um, how come we can say that they have the keys of the kingdom of heaven how come the church has the keys of the kingdom of heaven yet the kingdom of God is future right remember this these are the people of God they are citizens in the kingdom but they are in this world so the citizens man sila so they have jurisdiction among fellow citizens so this is what we may call the provisional authority over the people of the kingdom no kahit sa future pa sila magiging judge to judge the nations or even the 12 tribes of Israel they can still judge the church can judge uh, problems within the church or sin in the church and uh, ganun ano sa nagbigay pa nga ng parable si si Lord no sa uh, about uh, um the parable of the talent no it's like a man going on a journey then he called his servants and it entrusted to them his property so iba't ibang binigay na responsibility and then sabi Nung bumalik si, si, yung master, dun sa parable na yon yung iba talaga, nag-grow yung kanilang uh, finances, yung iniwan sa kanilang finances ng, ng master nila, at sabi ng master sa kanila, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little, and I will set you over much. So ito yung, yung binigay ng master nila nung, nung wala siya, that's the provisional authority. You will... So okay, I will give you to the keys of the kingdom. Yeah, and I will go. So Malaysia. Then he comes back. Uh he will judge these people, no, the, the workers in the kingdom. And if they have been trustworthy with the little, they will be entrusted with much. No, they will be judging the twelve tribes of Israel. But those who have squandered their opportunity to impress their master when he returns they will be cast as the worthless servant into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth so sa madaling salita this is a provisional authority for the uh, the church to govern itself to discipline itself while it is living in this world waiting for the coming kingdom so now pag-usapan natin yung mga major players or uh, characters sa kingdom ni God una yung mga judges di ba? This, we're talking about the rewards given to those who have given up everything to follow the Lord they will be rewarded with responsibilities because they have been entrusted with little they will be entrusted with much they will be judging the 12 tribes of Israel that's one of the major players uh, when the kingdom of God appears. Here's another player or character. In the parable of the two sons, uh, tinanong ni Jesus yung mga kausap niya, mga skeptics, yung mga opponents niya. Which of the two, the two sons, did the will of his father? Referring to yung una. Sabi niya, ay, ayaw sumunod, pero eventually sumunod. Or yung pangalawa na, oh, sabi, susunod, pero hindi naman sumunod. So ang sagot nila, the first. Yung ayaw sumunod pero sumunod naman later on. Kaya sabi ni Jesus sa kanila, 
Uh, truly, I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. So they are becoming, you can say, they are becoming citizens of God because they are believing in Jesus. No, kaya pagdating ng kingdom, they have repented already. The kingdom is near; they will enter it. Pero sila, ano ginagawa nila? No, they say they're going to obey the Father, and actually, when the Father sent the Son, and they did not obey the Son, so they are not actually obeying the Father. Kaya hindi sila nakakapasok. Ganun din sa Matthew 21 verse 43, sabi niya, ang uklos niya, Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruits. They have repented. No? Kaya naka, they're becoming citizens of the kingdom. So when the kingdom appears, no, at the end of the age, when Jesus comes, which is future, then they will inherit uh, the kingdom prepared for them by their father in heaven yeah then sa Matthew 23 when Jesus spoke woes against the people of Israel and those who do not believe in him in Israel sabi niya woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees you hypocrites you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces you yourselves do not enter nor will you let those enter who are trying to Dahil yung binibigyan nila, masyadong uh, unnecessary, no? uh, pabigat. Sa halip na uh, makapagpatawad sila, uh, no? binibigyan nila ng, uh, pinapakita nila ng kanilang hypocrisy. And so, in, in, in effect, they are shutting the door of the kingdom to the people who wanted, who are repentant, pero because of the burden, unnecessary burden na pinapataw nila, they are shutting the door of the kingdom to these people. Pero in fact, sila hindi makakapasok because they are hypocrites. So, what are the other, the second major player? Una, yung mga judges. Pangalawa, and those who will not enter the kingdom. O, merong sheep at merong goat. Ito yung mga goats. Third character. Uh, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. No? The third characters are the least and the greatest in the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Diba? If you are like this child, you will be the greatest in the kingdom. No? Sabi pa niya sa verse 5, 12, Rejoice and be glad, be, glad, be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So we're talking about rewards now. And then sabi pa niya sa verse uh, 11 ng chapter 20 the, the greatest among you shall be your servant so there are going to be the greatest in the kingdom those who prioritize their service no, their humility and they are uh, standing firm till the end they will be the greatest in the kingdom and of course they will be the least no, the least are those who teach or relaxes the teachings of Jesus or reduce, nagpabawas dun sa turo ni Jesus, o hindi nagtuturo ng commands ni Jesus, they will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So these are the, if we can summarize, the major characters or major players in the kingdom of God based on the book of Matthew. Now, um, dito sa Matthew 12.32, meron sinabi dito, Si Jesus, no, sabi niya, whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. I want to focus on this last part of the verse, this age or in the age to come. So obviously, if the end of the age if he, is His coming when He sits on His glorious throne, if that's the end of the age, this age is the age uh, of his first advent to our age to our present age we are living in that age this age no ka, 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 kapareho natin sila they were living in this old age and when the end of the age comes yun yung age to come Alright, so I hope we made it clear kung ano yung this age and the age to come. Now, finally, let's talk about the 
let's talk about the na- the the now and the not yet no paano ba natin yun ma-assess dito sa sa book of Matthew well obviously base sa mga pinag-aralan natin the already oh the now uh, meron ng people or citizens or disciples of the kingdom they are living in this world and they are seeking God's righteousness more than their basic needs and worldly riches they are humble like children and they will grow like master seed or like leaven and and the, also there are these in this world who don't subscribe to the will of God but they are called Christians they are called believers but they don't really subscribe to the will of God just like the world no uh, God owns the world he is the king of the world he never lost dominion over the world but the world are in rebellion so they don't subscribe to the will of God no they don't they, they, they don't obey the commands of Christ the precepts of God no kaya kaya yung mga ganun no if they are just called Christians and they're just calling Jesus Lord uh, calling Jesus Lord doesn't guarantee entrance to the age to come in the kingdom but only those who does the will of God the Father and those are the already right and they have the provisional authority in the church okay they have been given responsibility as citizens of the kingdom to take care of the citizens of the kingdom and they will be judged on how they perform their ministry if they can be trusted with this little responsibility which is now then in the age to come they will be given a greater responsibility would that would be their reward and so the end of the age is that day of the harvest now when Jesus comes and the angels will gather the elect and Jesus will judge the nations as if to separate the goat and the sheep that would be the end of the age so what is the not yet no we already discussed the already or the now what is the not yet they have not yet entered the kingdom they have not yet been given the responsibility to judge the 12 tribes and they have not yet received eternal life and eternal punishment or eternal life which stands for immortality although they are already citizens of the kingdom 